So today, what we're going to look at is uh, section 4.4, and it's scatter plots and lines of fit. Have you guys heard of scatter plots? Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, lines of fit. No. Lines of fit. What is that? So um, let me let me give you uh, an example here. Um, they call it. Uh, they're also going to call this linear regression, which is kind of a weird statement. But basically, if you've got some data, so you, you've collected data on something, what you can do is you can say, well, what's a line that best correlates with the data? And, and you can do that, and computers do that, and they do it um, with like a lot of calculations. It takes a long time for a computer to decide what, what the line of best fit is. But we're going to use our, our eyes, and we're going to estimate at them, and we're going to do a pretty good job of it, it turns out. But you could also find out that, well, it's actually not a line that this data fits. It's actually maybe like a curve, and you can figure out that. And that's not a linear regression. It's a regression over some other type of equation. But it's just finding out an equation that fits the data the best. Okay, It fits the data the best. Well, uh, let's take a look at some data that we have. Um, it says information can be graphed on a coordinate plane. If the data has a pattern, it's called a correlation. So, that first picture there, do you think it has a pattern to it? Yes. 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 How would you describe <coughs> the pattern? Negative. Okay, so um, it's going down from left to right. Did you agree with that? Yes. yes. And I like how you, how you guys described that as negative. Yeah, we would describe that as a negative correlation. A negative correlation. Oh, uh, what about the second bit of data there? Yeah. Positive. Positive. Yeah, it seems to be going uh, up from left to right, right? Up from left to right. And if you can make a decision that there is a pattern to it, then you can describe its correlation. Guess how you describe this? Positive correlation. Yeah, positive correlation. Positive correlation. And then it, you have data like the next bit of data. Is there a pattern to that? Do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's hard to it's hard to decide what you say that now. It's hard to determine what the best like line of data is, right? <coughs> oh. I mean, you know, if there's a correlation, well, let me back up a little bit. If you can decide on a correlation, you can draw a line of best fit. Now actually, um, and I'd like you guys to, to practice this, but I gotta tell you, the best thing to use is something clear. And I'll show you why. If I can have this. This, uh, Walmart gift card. His Walmart gift card. Does anybody have a clear Walmart gift card? Actually, it's the I best Walmart gift card. Best birthday ever. Oh, best birthday ever. Oh, best birthday ever. Yeah. Well, um, I didn't yeah. know they exist until I still don't know. Check this out. Um, oh, that's good. Okay, take a look, take a look. If you have a clear one, a clear straight edge, you can tell what you want for your line of best fit is you want to go with the flow of the dots. You want to go with the flow of the dots. And how people describe that is for your line of best fit, you should have about as many points on either side of your line throughout your line. So if I did like this, would that be a very good line of best fit? Because on uh, over here, everything's on the right, down here, everything's on the left, right? So you want about the same number of points, left and right, throughout your line of best fit. So take a little bit of time. 
Now again, like I said, a clear one is the best way to go because you can see everything perfectly. I will give you guys a hint. A lot of times when you just connect the, the, the end points, it ends up being pretty good. I don't think that's perfect, but I think it's a little more like this. <coughs> once you've decided on uh, where you have about the same number of points um, left and right, go ahead and draw yourself your line of best fit. And um, it is a judgment call, isn't it? It's a judgment call. It's not going to be perfect. Joey, could you draw a line of best fit for the next one? What's that? Oh, okay. So what you're going to have to do is do a little extra work then. Yeah. Just kind of double check as you do your line of best fit. I think I can do it. I think you can handle it. Maybe. Uh, can I get a pencil piece on my glove? Always, Joey. Can you get yourself one? Get your line of best fit. Now, the reason I wanted to pause and talk about those lines of best fit, can we draw a line of best fit for this data? Is there any line that seems to be better than any other line? No. Not really. Not really. So what we write on this last one is we write relatively, relatively no correlation. Now the reason we don't write no correlation is because it could turn out, it could turn out that if we got more data, there might be a correlation. So let's say we, we collect more data and we get some points over here and we get some points down here. Is there still no correlation? No. Suddenly with more data we realize, oh, there's actually what kind of correlation? A negative, a negative correlation. So that right there is why we say relatively no correlation because based off of what we have here, we can't tell that there is, but it's possible there could be more to the story. All right, um, it says when you have a correlation, you can draw a line of best fit. After you draw a line of best fit, you can write an equation for that line. So that's why this is in chapter four, is because once we draw our line of best fit, we are going to write an equation. So let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, it says make a scatter plot of the data, draw a line of fit, write an equation for the line. So I'm going to give you guys some special instructions here, okay? Uh, first things first, though, make a scatter plot of the data. You're just uh, graphing a bunch of points, aren't you? So go ahead and take a moment, plot those points. Please double check and make sure that you plotted them correctly. It's so easy to, to get turned around or to forget a negative, something like that. And after you double check yourself, go ahead and double check me. Make sure that we agree. All right, so what do you guys think? Is there a correlation here? What kind of correlation is it? A negative correlation. Because we were able to determine that it had a negative correlation, we're going to be able to draw a what? A line of best fit. And just a heads up again, a lot of people will connect the, the endpoints. If I do that, do you see how all my other points are going to be under the line? So I don't think that's the best way to go. I think it's going to be more kind of through the middle of stuff here. We'll just do the best we can. 
It's a little more difficult when you can't see through it, but we can still make it happen. All right, when you draw your line of best fit, expand it out. I, I probably didn't expand it out enough. Make it cross all the way to the edges of your graph paper. Oh. Okay, make it expand all the way across. Here's why. Um, when you write your equation, you're going to use two points. So uh, use two points. But I want you to use two points that are far apart. To write an equation. And the reason I suggest doing that is my experiences over the years have told, shown me that if you get coordinates or points that are close together, when you actually uh, graph the equation of the line, it doesn't often fit your line of best fit very well. All right, everybody with computers open are in the wrong. Close your computers. Exactly. Be more like Joey. That's what I always say. Be more like Joey. Okay. All right. So, um, what I want you to do is I want you to find a nice coordinate where it hits the, the a grid mark nicely, but try to get it as far apart as possible. That's going to make your equation way more accurate. Are you guys with me on this? Yes. Way more accurate. So, each of our lines of best fit are different, right? Um, but I'm going to search. I'm going to zoom in real good so I can see it better. All right. So I see that it seemed to have hit pretty nicely. I think I pointed at it earlier. I like that point right there. So I'm going to use 6, negative 7 as one of my coordinates. Now, if you want to uh, use the same points as me just to be able to check your answer easily, you can do that. But you can also do whatever, you know, use your graph, right? You can use your graph and find out what point it hits nicely. And then going the other direction, I think it hits pretty darn close to right there. So I'm going to use negative 5, 8. Negative 5, 8. Now that I've got two coordinates, can I write an equation of a line? Yeah. You betcha. You bet we can. So... Down here at the bottom, I'm going to find the slope using my two points. I get to do 8 minus negative 7. And because I did that, I'm going to do negative 5 minus 6. <coughs> and I get a slope of 15 over negative 11. Does that reduce? Eleven's prime. Yep, it doesn't reduce. Now I'm going to do point slope form, and I'm going to use. I guess I'll use this point right here since it's on the screen. So I'm going to go point slope form y minus a negative seven equals my weirdo slope times x minus 6. And then we want to write this in what format? Y equals mx plus b. Yep, we're going to write this in slope-intercept form. And it may be messy, it may not be. It depends. Looks like it's going to be a little fractiony, isn't it? I 
got uh, negative 15 over 11x plus, I just multiplied that 6 with the 15 and got uh, 90, so it's 90 over 11. And then what's left for me to do? Yep, subtract that 7 over. Then my equation is going to be negative 15 over 11x. And let's see, I'm going to use the <coughs> of this. I guess, I guess I'm going to make this a mixed number. Um, I'm going to make it uh, 8 because 11 goes into 98 times with 2 left over. So I've got 8 and 2 elevenths. Minus 7 means my y-intercept is positive 1 and 2 elevenths. And that's my equation. So it was a little treacherous. I had to deal with some, some fractions, didn't I? I had to deal with some fractions. I went ahead and decided to make it a mixed number. You guys know how to do that? Yeah. Yep. How many times does 11 go into 90? Eight times. And then eight, uh, 90 minus 88 is 2. That's our remainder. And then when I subtract that 7, so my y-intercept is 1 and 2 elevenths. Let's double check and make sure that our y-intercept makes sense, uh, given the graph. Why is it zero? Say what now? My y-intercept is zero. Your y-intercept was zero? Yeah. That's pretty cool. <coughs> I think one and two elevenths is reasonable. I mean, it looks like it's more at one, but two elevenths would be a little bit above that. I think that's pretty reasonable. I think it's pretty good. <coughs> so what do you guys think about that first example? Pretty easy. Pretty easy. All right, let's try the next one. And I'll come around and check yours when you're done and just see how it looks. Again, is everybody's going to be a little different? Probably. Yes, mm -hmm. probably.
equation. Let me, let me check and see what you see what you did. Sure would, yeah, it'd be a positive slope. And then you would want to reduce that fraction. Okay. Oh, of course.
Yeah, no, you don't need oh, to yeah. 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 I don't know how much you can use that. But let's go to the one spot. It's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. 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 I'm going to all right ladies and gentlemen take a look take a look so, um, so uh, here's here's mine. I'll show you. Now, um, when I picked my two points, do you see how I picked them about as far apart as I possibly could? So that's what you want to try to do. Is you want to want to try to find places where it crosses the grid nicely. Now notice, am I looking up at here at these? No. No, 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 no. We want to look at, we want to do this the right way. And the right way is to draw your line of best fit as best you can and write an equation for that line, for that line. And try to pick points that are as far away as possible. Now I kind of looked out, didn't I? You see how my slope was all pretty? My slope was real pretty. Um, and I lucked out. Now let me show you though that or previously, previously I had, when I did this problem another time, I for some reason used 2, 3, and negative 2, negative 10. And did I get a, a super pretty slope? I did not. I did not. Okay, so what I, what I noticed, did you guys notice when I was checking? I was looking at your y-intercept, wasn't I? I was looking at your y-intercept to see if it made sense from the graph. That's what you guys need to do when you work these problems out, is if you're getting a y-intercept that's negative 10, is that even close to where your y-intercept should be? So you're probably doing something wrong with the fractions. Is everybody with me on that? So um, just be super careful with writing these equations. Well, on the back, there's a, uh, a real-world application that we're going to look at. And it says, use table values uh, below, which shows the change in sales of women's clothing between the years 1997 and 2002. They want us to label our graph. Name your graph by creating a title. Label the axes complete with units for each. Make a scatter plot of the data. Have time represent, oh, check it out. Have time represent what? Years, Years since Years. 1997. That, that's gonna be important, isn't it? So it's 1997 and zero. Yep. We're gonna draw a line of best fit. We're gonna write an equation of the line. So first things first, notice we've got years and we've got sales in billions of dollars. Is everybody with me? Yep. But for our data, we're going to replace 1997 with what? Zero. Zero, because we're doing years since 1997. Does that kind of simplify things a little bit? I think so. Now, before we graph this, they want us to name the graph. Well, what's this graph going to be talking about? 
um, sales of women's clothes every year. Yeah, yeah, women's clothing sales. And then they want us to uh, label our axes here. Uh, we already got kind of a uh, head start that we have time, don't we, down here? Yep. Yep. And um, what I'd like for to write is time since what? 1997. 1997. Because I, I, I want to just do like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Yes. And then um, over here will be our money, and it's going to be uh, sales, right? But let's make it clear that it's uh, it's what? Billions. Yeah, billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. That's a lot. All right. So uh, first things first. Um, we're going to have to kind of decide how to do this, how to graph this. Um, I mean, we can go just, do you want to just go by ones across the bottom? Yeah. It doesn't spread out the data very much, but I don't think that's super important. So we'll just go zero, one, two, three, four, five. But then going up, I don't know. I, I mean, we got to go all the way up to 34, right? Uh -huh. But do you see how all the data is between basically 27 and 35? Mm -hmm. So what I'd like for us to practice doing is let's do a little, um, let's do a little zigzag in here. And what that's telling everybody is that we're going to skip some data. We're going to skip, and I think, let me check, I think if we do that and we start at 27, we could go up by ones and have all our data in there. You guys with me on that? So 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Will that work out pretty well? Yeah. Oh, wait. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Um, you know, maybe we could have we could have stretched this out if we wanted to. We could have stretched this out a little bit more, I think, if we wanted to. But we're, we're going to be able to get our data on here. Now, um, be careful when you graph these because we're graphing decimal values, aren't we? So, um, 0, 27, <coughs> Is that almost a 28? Well, can we get out of here soon? Yeah. Yeah. Two minutes? That's not fair. That's not fair at all. So, hey, will you guys uh, finish this example up on your own? We'll go over it tomorrow, okay? Do I have to show you?